Good evening and all, hope you're doing well. Um, so we just quickly look at the bubbles and what's going on right now is that I think we may have a pound USD set up uh, in play. And the idea was is that we're gonna see uh, like an exchange of the bubbles, the currencies, and it looks like the dollar is getting closer. It's encroaching on pound. Uh, so what I think is gonna happen on pound USD is that we're gonna probably come up to take the SLC. Uh, if I just grab the terminal across, and uh, what I think is going to happen is that we're probably going to take the SLC out and then that action will then stop them out with any luck and uh, then it will cause that bubble to shift away and then the dollar will have pretty much free reign in this area and then it'll be in the strong buy section. So I think it's got its eyes set on pound right now and it looks likely we're probably going to get that stop loss class to above, um, to be honest. Uh, let's just maximize that. Let's see if there's any above. It's not really. See that bit that's sticking out like a sore thumb? That blue area? There's not much above. Okay, so there's one here, uh, but that's small. Okay, so this one is really large. So, And it makes sense that they're going to come up and probe and get that liquidity because we've got the inflation data out and Bailey's hinted there's going to be a drop in inflation. If there's going to be a drop in inflation, they don't have to be as hawkish at all and uh you know there's it'll probably downplay any pound strength really because they're not going to hike if the inflation's coming down they've done a good job they don't need to hike uh so it's probably going to be a pump and dump scenario like rp said in the discord so probably likely to one two seven thirty it's very close it's large and we could even do this all right so that's the trade setup we were sort of looking at right now and i think it could come into fruition it might come into play it might work um, but we'll have to wait and see so the bubble analysis that i did this morning was here this is how we were this morning we are pretty much quite close we haven't really moved that much but the dollar has got closer and this is where we are now so they the dollar is coming closer to the pound and it's look like it's going to be a predator and prey and uh, this is going to be the predator i think but we'll need risk off it's really really important so if you're wondering why uh perhaps the bubbles might not be going to plan and you know it's got strong buy strong sell you have to remember that the fundamental nature of risk now if we're risk on like the indices are going up to all-time high the pound's going to do better than the USD because it's a riskier currency compared to the USD. This is like a safe haven. This would be a risky currency, especially the Aussie and New Zealand dollar. Uh, There's, you know, they're like beta currencies, they're risky. Okay, so it, while we may have a setup using the bubbles, we might not have the fundamental criteria to cement that idea. And that's the difficult thing about trading is that you're looking at analysis, you're looking at technical, and then you look at your sentiment, but you might be missing out on the fundamental, or you could just be technical only, or you could be fundamental only, but you're missing out on the, the other two. If you get the three to agree, you can do okay. And uh, so it's just really, really important to remember while we've got uh, like a potentially strong USD, that's gonna do really well if we sour on risk appetite. If the interest is full, then this is gonna do okay. It'll do really well, okay? And it's probably gonna kick the pounds part once we've got the inflation done and it's out, then it's going to take those stops out. By taking the stops out, we'll see that bubble move and then we'll see a resume, a resumption to the natural equilibrium line, which is 50%. So that's the natural resting place for currencies. And we've come down potentially to take stops out, although we could be a little bit lower down, to be fair, because the Australian dollar bubble was down here and we raided stops a lot. And now we come back up. So this action is a stop hunt. Remember, this is a stop run zone. This is the stop run zone. So just a just an analysis there about a trade idea that might come into play, but we need to make sure the fundamentals are in place. So if we go risk off tomorrow and the indices fall, and then we get this set up, we get an exchange between those two bubbles. I can see the pound USD fall quite heavily. Okay, so that's that, right? Uh, risk calc. 
Uh, complacency right now. The herd have gone ever so slightly long. Well, not really ever so slightly. Yes, it's, it's quite a large move. It's 1.7. So it's actually taking quite a bit away from the big picture. Uh, so we were at minus 28. We're minus 26 now. So, you know, if we continue at that rate, it's going to take 13 days and then we'll be, we'll flip at the big picture. So we've got two weeks if we go at this rate. But what will happen is that they'll have a scary news event. The scary news event triggers the flight or fight um, part of the brain in the retail mindset or mass in the hive mind. And then they're going to want to sell. So the scary news stories are designed and engineered to scare, uh, you know, retail investors. Not not just purely designed to <laughs> for that reason, but uh, a, a large part of the the bad news is out there is to keep people in fear and to control them okay so that's really really important and so if you wonder why you're looking like the newspaper or you know your news outlet it's all doom and gloom and that's like the idea right it's, it's newsworthy it's 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 negative and it, it keeps people in line okay and this is what they want us to be kept in line through fear so uh, if we have a scary news event, they're likely going to sell it because that's just human nature. And that's what, <laughs> is it like, that's how it's engineered, okay? So uh, it's, it's a good, eye, good idea to keep an, an eye on the sentiment and to look at the big picture and to look out the box as well because you have to try and understand what they want us to do. They want us to sell, right? And I've made, made a few videos <laughs> going back several years now and why they want us to be in a state of fear. And it's just because, you know, we want they want to control us and they also want to take our liquidity. If we sell, our stops are going to be up here. So they're going to push price. They want price to go higher anyway, and they're going to take our stops. Um, so it's a double win for them and it's a double loss for the retail trader. So remember to be careful if you're going to sell, especially if we're green. Right, that's like the big picture. And that's to tell you that we're really looking for dips to buy. All right, so um, just a heads up there. So you've got to be careful. Uh, they sold the dollar CAD a lot. And um, the weekly shift, and they've gone long AU and NU. So these two could perform quite poorly. So we come to the QDB scores. So remember, Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. And, uh, you're, okay, so that could actually... Be a bit more negative because we've got negative negative sell and it's just sitting on the fence so that could be waiting for the indices <laughs> you know because you know what i'm saying about the fundamental nature while we can be looking at the sentiment or technical we also really have to be looking at the fundamentals so while that's sitting on the fence come to the risk calc the indices are sitting on the fence okay so that's possibly why the Aussie USD hasn't really done anything because it's looking for, you know, the overarching risk appetite. Are we risk on or risk off? And so that's why that's a non-mover. But sentimentally, it should fall. So if these fall, then sentimentally we can do okay on those shorts. Okay? Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. You want the three, the three things to agree. It's really important. And uh, Tuesday... Uh, so EG red, EJ red, France, Germany, and UK. Um, uh, yeah, so really they moved quite strongly on France, okay. And also those they shorted oil. It's come to the indices in gold. Uh, oh, I forgot about that. Uh, so remember, if you come to the sheet and you see a descending line, it's a sell, okay. If it's an ascending line, it's a buy. So. Uh, Maybe a little bit of caution with GU tomorrow because we've got an ascending line saying to buy USD, but it's also got an ascending line to say to buy a GBP, the Great British Pound. So uh, it could be a bit of a tricky one. Ideally, what you probably might want to do is maybe uh, New Zealand dollar USD or Aussie USD, potentially, or even um, Aussie pound, Kiwi pound. You know, or even the euro. But it's just what you don't want to do, ideally, in an ideal world, is that you wouldn't have strong versus strong. You want strong versus weak, okay? So come to, um, yeah, the indices. 
and gold come across and uh, the robot did okay today we had a we had a win so it's okay it's not pumping out a lot of trades it's just being very patient very passive um, but I think it's going okay so um, uh, which one is it this one here so basically it's just um, it's just it's, it's opening one two trades a day and it's just gradually performing okay <laughs> um, so I suppose the only downside to the bot is that it could probably trigger more trades but so far it's okay we could potentially look at increasing the sizes because we're not producing many signals but we've got an okay hit rate I mean okay it's not a lot of money we're not going to be mega rich at this rate because we're just using small sizes and we've got a small account okay so uh, you know it's, it's proven that the proof of concept is working it's using the Twitter API and it's using the, the technical indicators uh, whenever we get the Twitter API to trigger the trade and as long as it's strong buy or strong sell then we'll get that trade so it won't open if, if we're buy or sell or neutral it has to be strong buy or strong sell and it seems that the technical and this Twitter API is working all right okay we don't have any fundamental check in it because I wouldn't really know where to start because we could potentially look at the VIX but we've got so many other fundamental metrics you know, you know just like working constantly around the clock so it'd be very very hard to have the fundamental check in and I'd, ideally I'd like to keep it simple as well uh, because you know we've got all these checks you know these fundamental stuff going on so i think for now we'll just keep it simple and it's going okay so you know i don't think we really need to change it um so s p so they've gone long and yet price is going up so this is a bit fishy it's a little bit unusual so what should happen if they buy we shouldn't see price go higher so we can map a box on here so anything above that box is naughty okay so this is likely fake and it might just want to grab some stops out before falling. There's going to be a lot of stops up here. So it might just want to grab those and then come down. Because really we shouldn't be going higher because of that, okay? So um, be careful. I don't like it when the retail guys are getting paid. It's, it's a little bit strange. It's a bit ominous. And likewise, but no, this is probably okay because they've sorted it, you see? So we can probably do okay. We haven't got the crossover yet, uh, but it looks likely. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see with that one. DAX. And then, um, don't forget we've got FOMC tomorrow as well. So a lot of these things are probably going to pump to get the stops. And then we'll have the FOMC and then we could potentially fall. Uh, but I don't know what's going to come out of the FOMC that's going to be news. You know, I think yeah, it's probably just all speculation, isn't it? And uh, just uh, trying to front run uh, the market and stuff. So, you know, we are getting a little bit skewed here as well. Again, <laughs> you know, I think the, the lowest we got was minus um, 10%. Uh, you know, you did get below 10%. Yeah, look at that. 98 so many bears and they just like squeezed them very naughty another squeeze and at that point they had given up quite strongly there's the um less short here then uh they sold it <laughs> they looked at this price section so they sold it price came up and uh yeah then they sold it again so we can probably draw a box so we should be above this box. Okay. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, more or less that one. So we should be above that one. And then that's that. And we'll look at gold and we'll wrap up the video. No, not silver. Gold. And uh, we're a bit sideways, but we have they have sold. So we should be above. Uh, Here-ish. My only uh, criticism of the trading station is that I wish they'd have a cursor that was easier to see. I don't know if you can see those lines. As I move, it makes it very difficult to see. It should make it a bit darker. Uh, oops. Oops, hopefully that's okay. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and then that's it. So this one, I'm guessing, it's very, very hard to see. So we should be above this box because they'd sold it and uh, they should be getting punished, okay? So have a look at that high at 2430 and 2450 was the big stop on. That's the round number and uh, it really had to crush so many people. And if you think about, think about it, when we were minus 2000, you could have seen some stops at 2,450, 2,500, and you think, no way is it ever going to go out there. But then if everyone thinks that, then it's going to gravitate up there and it's going to punish them for their terrible risk management. So it's likely that these guys have got stopped out here, had no risk management, and they were probably thinking about averaging. And they probably thought, well, you know, I'm getting paid swap, I can hold, but can they hold a $450 drawdown. I don't know, even on a micro lot, that would have been excruciating. And if you had a normal size, it would have probably blown your account up had you have held when we were below 2000. And so that was like a new normal when we were above 2000, but yet they held short. As we can see, we've been green for ages on the trading station. So that's today's video. Uh, I are on the pound USD tomorrow. We could see an exchange in that bubble, uh, but then we'll need the risk off to cement the deal. And if we do go risk off, and uh, we're gonna get that bubble change, and then we should see a stronger dollar, and then um, you know we'll have that fundamental uh, flow behind the USD, and then it can actually do quite well. And uh, with any luck, it actually stays in that position as well. It doesn't flip-flop. And then um, we can try and get some nice profits. So potentially what's going to happen with GU is that we're going to come up and get the stop loss cluster. Then maybe even down to the one below is not that far away. So remember to trade safely. Do know your exits. And if you're going to do like an averaging thing, at least um, cut some losses. So I don't hold on to that horrendous losses. I wouldn't recommend doing an averaging thing unless like you're experienced. And you can hold on to that drawdown. Perhaps you know you are comfortable about your sizing, and you you know about the direction, and you might be okay. So just be careful. And uh, I, I personally wouldn't recommend it, but it's completely up to you. You know, as long as you know your sizes and your risk, and uh, and ideally you know where your exit is. And perhaps your exit is going to be when your account gets to a certain level. Uh, but for me, I'd rather just know my, where my stop loss was and uh, and how much I'm prepared to lose if I get to that stop loss. Because if it's a £50 loss, that's fine. But a £500 loss is not fine. A five grand loss, which I've done before, is absolutely horrendous. So don't be in that position. Do know your exit. Okay, it's really, really important. And I'll speak to you guys tomorrow evening. Remember to trade safely. And have a good night.